Today's episode of the Believe in Steelers podcast is brought to you by betonline.ag. The Summer Olympics is in full swing. We've got the second half of the Major League Baseball season. And Ike, tonight, the NBA draft, there's a lot that you can wager on if you want to place a bet on the action. Bet Online is the place to do it. Who's going to be the first? Who's going to be the second? Who's going to be Lotto? Just go to Bet Online. Make sure y'all get y'all bets in on that. Send me that Cade Cunningham jersey, Ike. I'm a men's medium. I got you. I got you. Okay. For sure. Visit the website today or use your mobile device to join and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. So before the next tip off, face off, or pitch ahead, head over to Bet Online and start playing today. All right, cue the music. It's time to start the show. Welcome into another edition of the Believe in Steelers podcast on the Believe Podcast Network. I'm your host, Mark Bergen, joined as always by my guy, two-time Super Bowl champion and 12-year veteran of the Pittsburgh Steelers, Ike Taylor. Ike, it's Friday Eve. I heard you're grooving to the music. How are you doing this morning, my man? Man, I'm doing real good. Uh, had a good time out in San Diego with Troy Ryan Clark. Wind up having another good night. I stayed with Troy Palomalu and family. And all I can say is one night in San Diego. Okay, okay. We're going to get to that towards the end of the show. And I, we are a week away from the Steelers season officially getting underway. Training camp is underway. But we're literally one week away from the first preseason game, the NFL Hall of Fame game, Pro Football Hall of Fame game, in Canton, Ohio, against the Dallas Cowboys. You're going to be there. Training camp's underway at Heinz Field, so that's where we're going to open up today's show. I've seen some of the highlights on social media. I'm really excited. The season is, like, right here. What's kind of your big takeaway so far a week away from the on-field game action? Oh, man. That fast. Talking about the Tampa Bay Bucks winning the Super Bowl. And now, you know, fast forward to five and a half, six months later, we about to start a preseason game, the Hall of Fame game with the Dallas Cowboys and the Pittsburgh Steelers. So like like Coach LeBeau used to always say, don't blink, because the more you blink, man, the more time passes by. But I'm just glad the football season is up in effect less than 10 days. So uh, let's see what these Pittsburgh Steelers got to offer. Let's see that come back, see what we got to offer. And what a time to be alive right now. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. I will say this, too. I'm glad that I saw that first-round draft pick, Najee Harris, is now vaccinated. And here's why this matters, right? Whether you're going to or not, individual choice, but the NFL has made it very clear that there are incentives to do so. And here's why. And media members will continue to ask this question. And for good reason, I'm going to explain why right now. If an unvaccinated player tests positive, he is out for a minimum of 10 days. Meaning if this stems on into the regular season, you're talking about potentially missing two weeks of on-field action. If you are vaccinated and you test positive, all you need is two negative COVID-19 tests 24 hours apart. So that threshold is a lot less. So from a pure football standpoint, Ike, I know I thought this week we might be talking about Najee Harris because he was wearing that yellow wrist brand. And honestly, it's like, again, we're at the point whether you want to or not, it's really your individual choice. But from a pure football standpoint, that's why that matters. And please do not fault media members as they continue to ask players about this throughout the league. That's the reason why it has to do with how early you're allowed to come back, whether you're vaccinated or not. From a pure football standpoint, that's why it will continue to be a storyline as we move closer and closer to the start of the 2021 season. The NFL is your 6'8", 200 and 90 pound, 3% body fat, brother to the 5'6", 
hundred thirteen pound brother in the NFL, they just strong arming them guys. And what I mean by strong arming them, you have to do it. And they're putting them in a position to damn near is voluntary, but it's mandatory. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so yes, yes. So you 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 put you put the guys in a situation. Um, if you're not vaccinated by the time the season come, you got to give me 15 grand of your paycheck. So what if I'm a practice guy and I'm not vaccinated and I wind up catching COVID from one of my teammates? I'm not even talking about a family member. I wind up because my family member's not around me. I wind up catching it from one of my teammates and I'm the bottom of the 53 man roster or I'm on a practice squad or I'm a traveling guy from being a free agent. But now I got to give you the 15K. You know what my check look like after taxes. Or the team forfeits if they got enough guys, you know, who 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 have got vaccinated but still might come out negative, me or positive, in the next two, three, 48 hours. So then you look at it from a standpoint, what if, what if I don't have enough research and I don't want to get vaccinated. Well, I don't know if you're going to be able to play. And if you just look at it and these coaches, and that's why you see some of these coaches stepping down slash getting fired, they don't have a union. So when you don't have a union, you can't fight it. So it's like, okay, you can only miss so many days of work. The NFL, man, they get strong armed players into situations. That's what's going on. They're definitely getting strong armed. Is it fair? No, but life ain't fair, and that's just what it is. I, you say strong armed again. I say heavily incentivized, however you want to phrase it. Unvaccinated players must continue to undergo daily tests. They must wear masks. They have to physically distance. They can't eat meals with teammates. They not even really allowed to leave team hotels during all of this too. So again, I so go back to go so ahead. So basically, you're not even there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. I, basically, you're you're not even you're not even there. You're damn near invisible. <laughs> I'm glad this isn't a storyline, though, because initially Najee Harris had that yellow bracelet, and I thought it might be something we're talking about on this week's show. That hopefully has come and gone. I like what I've seen from him on the field in training camp, breaking off some long runs in the clips we've seen on social media. Our guy, Pat Fryermute, the second-round pick, and this bodes well, too, like for the Steelers because Eric Ebron's entering a contract season. Who knows if he'll be in Pittsburgh beyond the 2021 season. So we've got the young players coming in. Again, maybe I'm just drinking the Kool-Aid and I don't want to be fooled with what we see in the preseason. Our guy Damashek always likens it to a war reenactment, seeing the on-field preseason play. But I'm really excited we're going to get back to on-field what's happening. I like what I've seen so far. I, I'm drinking the Steelers Kool-Aid a little bit here, right? But I, from the clips I've seen on social media, I cannot wait to get this thing rolling here next month. Yeah, I'm going to take a sip. I'm not going to drink it all. I'm going to take okay. a sip of some of that Kool-Aid. <laughs> okay. I'm going to take a sip of some of that Kool-Aid. Um, Pat, I'm going to call him Pat Faramon because he got a good fragrance to him. I just talked to Vince Williams, who retired last week. Shout out to Vince Williams. And he was talking about, man, what's up with Pat? He said he ain't dropping nothing. He was like, this is no disrespect to Heath Miller, but I, if he can't work on his blocking and we're talking about Pat, boy, he going to be something special, not only for this locker room, but for the Pittsburgh Steelers in general. He said, I, he's probably, he had all his hands I haven't seen in my life. So uh, that's that's a good thing to hear from Vince. Yeah, I know. Uh, I played the clip when Vince Williams retired about <laughs> you talking about how he's too jacked in high school and he's loading up the bench press and everything too. But you always say, Ike, especially early on in the season, we don't you don't want to get too caught up in the underwear Olympics of how they look in a t-shirt and shorts. But listen to what the players are saying. 
And to me, that's just a really encouraging sign for the Steelers. Again, especially because you're going to need someone at that position with Eric Ebron entering a contract season. Vance McDonald is now retired. So you've got to fill that void somehow. And then going back to Harris as well, uh, NFL Network reporter Aditi Kinkubabala, and I hopefully I did not butcher her name Kinkubala. completely there. Yes, Kinkuba. Yeah, did, yeah. It's my it's my last name dyslexia. I got you. but but in the last ten games of the season, the Steelers only had five hundred and seventy three rushing yards, which was the lowest ten game total output dating back to the nineteen forty six Detroit Lions team. So fans should be excited about Najee Harris coming in to this backfield and helping revitalize this running game that's been part of Steelers football for generations, not just years, not just decades, but generations now. So they should be excited about this. Yeah, I think everybody excited about Najee. You know what I'm saying? And, and you just – and just, just look at some of the quotes from Big Ben talking about Najee on old man. If once he really gets it, the game going to slow down to him, he's going to be a problem on the field. Looking at some quotes from Kevin Cole, but Kevin – we drafted, drafted – just thought he was for the NFL, and that's exactly what they're talking about now coming from the Pittsburgh Steelers training camp, that Najee is a three-down player for the NFL. So when you just got somebody special, um, which I thought was odd because I didn't think Pittsburgh was going to draft a first-round running back, but then when you look at how he was raised, the things he did in the offseason, driving 15 to 18 hours to support his teammates, um, doing things in the community, since he has gotten drafted, going back and, and doing his and doing his draft part on where he was raised, you're like, okay, it makes sense. He fits. He's a stiller. Then when you just pop in the tape, it's just like, man, I've been watching this kid for two years, man, him jumping and hurling over cornerbacks, him catching the ball out of the backfield, him being the reason why Alabama was, is, is having all its success so far in the past two years. Okay, it really makes sense. So, man, he's just a good dude. You know what I'm saying? You can just tell he just has a genuine soul and all he wants to do is help people out, let alone he just so happened to be a hell of a football player. He stuck out to me these last two years at Alabama. I was watching the Alabama Notre Notre Dame college football playoff game and I'm upstairs grabbing snacks. I could I told you the story. My dad starts shouting at the TV. I was back home for the holidays. And he starts shouting at the TV, just losing his mind. And I'm like, oh, man, like, what's going on? And it almost reminded me of, like, you know, back in the day, a TV show would come back from commercial break and you'd be take going to the bathroom or getting up. And, you know, the show's back on. So I come running back down the stairs, back to the basement. And my dad goes, this is the most incredible play I've ever seen. Take a look at this. And he hurdles over the Notre Dame defensive back who's like, 6'2", so it's not like he was a small player at all, and he just completely hurdles him and clears him and then runs, I don't know, another 30, 40 yards down the field. Yeah, he's a little bit different. You know, it's just by default, you just look at Alabama quarterbacks and be like, uh, they start off well in the league. They kind of just, like, die down around their fourth or fifth year. But then when you look at the sides, it's like, okay, that's that's Derrick Henry, brother. I ain't talking about little brother. I ain't talking about big brother. That's Derrick Henry twin, to be exact, <laughs> if you want to talk talk about it like that. And we all see what Derrick Henry is doing in the NFL. Um, when you want to talk about taking chances on tall running backs, not only in college but in the league, it's like that rarely happens. So for Alabama to have a Derrick Henry, then he go get his brother in a in, in a G, it was like, hold up, wait a minute. So tall running backs can fit the system. Tall running backs can work. NFL, but then you just, man, you look at Eddie George. Eddie George is pretty damn tall too, coming from Florida. I mean, coming from a uh, Ohio State. I'm sorry. So, um, I guess it's I guess the tall running backs are back in style. If <laughs> if you if you know what I'm saying. So, just just looking at it from that that aspect, man, he's going to do a lot not only for himself but a lot for just the Pittsburgh Steelers in general. Pittsburgh was ranked at the bottom 32 when it came down to rushing last year. I don't think that ever be an issue. 
Derrick Henry, the second highest rated running back in the new Madden NFL football game due out in August. They rated Christian McCaffrey ahead of Derrick Henry, despite the fact that injuries limited McCaffrey to three games in the 2021 season. Ike. And speaking of Madden ratings, TJ Watt, the third best edge rusher ranked in Madden behind Miles Garrett and Khalil Mack of the Chicago Bears. A 94 overall, like, I think our guy's just getting a little bit disrespected here considering he was the runner-up to win Defensive Player of the Year in the 2020 season behind only Aaron Donald. We can talk about production being higher, but with Donald, team's game plan for him, number one, he's playing on the interior versus the exterior off the edge with Watt, but... No, you talk. Madden, ra- Madden ratings, I, I, th- I think TJ Watt a little bit disrespected. I, I could understand Miles Garrett getting ranked ahead of TJ Watt for this reason. Look at how the Browns have revitalized their defensive line. I'm talking about Sheldon Richardson's God from Cleveland now, Olivier Vernon, I believe, still a free agent. So who did Garrett really have around him? Whereas with Watt, you could say, okay, he's got a Bud Dupree. On the inside, he's got Devin Bush for at least part of the season. Uh, He's got other playmakers around him, Minka on the back end and everything. I could see Miles Garrett being ranked ahead of Watt, but like Khalil Mack, to me, Watt should be ranked ahead of Khalil Mack if you want to talk about what their production was during the 2020 season. That's my two cents worth. What say you? I disagree. If 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 you're if you're drafting right now, you're taking Miles Garrett and Khalil Mack. You got to pick one of the three. Who are you taking? Who who you taking first, second, and third? And and, and and the reason why I look at it like that, Mark, is Khalil Mack, you can build your defense around Khalil Mack. Miles Garrett, you can build your defense around Miles Garrett. For 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 TJ Watt, you gotta have a few pieces. You're gonna need a few pieces. Now we're gonna see we're gonna see how TJ Watt handled his business when Bud Dupree is gone. We saw what happened when Bud Dupree had left. TJ kind of struggled a little bit. Everybody else, the Miles Garrett, the the Khalil Mack, other people struggle if those guys aren't in the game. And that's that's the difference when you're looking at franchise players. As far as the Madden, I think personally, Madden hit that exactly on the head. When it comes down to the running back race, I think Derrick Henry should have been over Christian McCaffrey. Okay. Okay. I, I'm with you if you're, maybe if you're talking right now, but as an asset, I would rather have Watt than Mac because he's younger, which is a little bit of a different conversation than to say on field performance. No, I'm, I'm going to take, I'm gonna, I think they hit it on the head. Mac, uh, Miles, and TJ. I, I thought that's perfect because I'm looking at it from a draft point of view. Who I'm drafting first out of those three in what particular order? So you want to see what Watt does this upcoming season. And I know you said, okay, I hope the Steelers go ahead and franchise him beyond the season, entering a contract year to kind of get a larger sample size. Again, also playing without Bud Dupree versus to give him that money now to where if you're allocating that much money, more than a hundred million dollar contract, you better be certain that he's worth that money. No, I think, I think overall in general, he's definitely, he's, He's definitely worth that money, but it's it's the price is high for his position. I think, you know, we talking about one forty five. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We talking about one hundred and forty five M's at his position, and you really can't deny the young man because he's been consistent when it comes down to these double digit sacks. Okay, but it's going, and you always need a Robin when it comes down to the opposite side of the airbrush. That's why that's why they went and got. Melvin Ingram, you know what I'm saying? A veteran guy who probably is going to play on one year. He's going to be very hungry, and he's going to try to get another subpar contract. You know what I'm saying? So time will tell. We 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 will see. I just saw what Cleveland did for the playoffs. You know, Cleveland made a lot of people on that defense disappear. You know, so time will tell. We'll see. How many times this season, Ike, do you think I'm going to confuse Melvin Ingram and Melvin Gordon? Because I was listening back to our last show, and I did it at least once, and I'm like, oh, man, I got to be better. I mean, bro, you know how many times I didn't slipped up? So for you to just – for you to catch that from last show, <laughs> that's probably your first time. 
I, I'm apologizing in advance to our viewers and listeners if I say Melvin Ingram er, and confuse him with Melvin Gordon and we're talking about the Steelers. You know I'm talking about Melvin Ingram, the Steelers right, right. In acquisition right. who's going to pair opposite TJ Watt. I'm apologizing in advance because I did yeah. it last week and I'm like, oh, man, I I was devastated, Ike. It's all good. We we all slip up, but I know I slip up way more than you. you you're damn near a perfectionist, so I don't even know why you're talking about this right now. <laughs> All right. We're going to move on to Aaron Rodgers reporting to Packers training camp. And Ike, as a media member, we ask public figures to be as honest as possible in interview mm-hmm. situations, in news conferences. This was about, was about as candid as I've ever seen a player or a public figure by any means for that matter. And to me, what he was saying made a heck of a lot of sense in terms of I'm an all pro quarterback. I just played an MVP level. Why wouldn't I be part of the discussions to decide to retain players or acquire players or attract free agent players in the discussions about how I perform my job? Like to me, he's not even throwing the Packers under the bus. It's more so like. Why would a, a good organization would be doing those things, especially when you're talking about a player of Aaron Rodgers' caliber? I agree with him 100%, and especially at that position. You know, usually when a guy's coming off an of MVP season, when the guy's coming off of just a, a season like Aaron Rodgers, in which he had last year, why wouldn't he not be in discussions? You know what I'm saying? These other quarterbacks – who are not even close to what Aaron Rodgers have have done in the league are in discussions with the front office or or offensive coordinator or head coach discussions on what they need to do in the offseason or who they might want to keep or who they might want to go get in the offseason. Our Aaron, Aaron Rodgers is, is is saying is, can I be part of this discussion? You know what I'm saying? With, with, with the three, the front office and the head coach. Can y'all include me too? Can y'all at least ask me, a question or two, you know, and here's why y'all should ask me. <laughs> because did you see the season I had last year? Do you not see I added I added MVP <laughs> on my resume last year? Do you not see that? So it, it, I agree with Aaron, man. It, it, and he's at a he's still in his prime. So why wouldn't you not talk to him? You know what I'm saying? He's not on the back end. He's still throwing. He's still throwing across the cross country passes from from the right side of the field to the left side of the field, laser beaming to this day, you know, and 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 I'm going to say this, uh, me, Troy and Ryan, because uh, we went out there to San Diego to talk to, to to have a sit down with Troy. We felt the same way, like Aaron Rodgers is probably the baddest MF and quarterback that we ever played. <laughs> we ever played against, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So. This is, why not? Why not have that man in these discussions? His resume proves it. He proves it. He's been Mister Consistent. You take Aaron Rodgers off the Green Bay Packers, Green Bay will probably disappear off the map. So why this man can't be in discussion? You might not like what he's doing in the off season. It might be unorthodox, but who cares? I just know when he comes in between these white lines doing football season, he's he's majestic. You know what I'm saying? So give that man. Aaron Rodgers have every to his own horn. And he did it in so many words in this in this in this conference, in this press conference. But he deserves to do that. If I could continue the truth serum that he was spitting earlier this week, I got asked the following right. questions. What kind of shape is he in ahead of the twenty twenty one season? I would ask him what compelled him to show up, but I did some research and I can already answer that question. He avoided more fines because he already missed OTAs for the first time in his career, but he would have been facing a daily fine of $50,000 per day. So even, Mm. you know, as much money as Aaron Rodgers makes, that adds up over time. And then is this a potential last dance situation with Rodgers and the Packers? Because Devontae Adams is also entering the final year of his deal and there was some reporting while the Rogers final year of his current contract is in 2023, there is a void of the final year, meaning there's more 
the way his contract is structured beyond this season, the Packers have more flexibility if they were to trade him. Which leads me to the big question, Ike. This is probably Big Ben's final season in Pittsburgh. Could Pittsburgh, the Steelers, be a destination for Aaron Rodgers to ride off into the twilight, join Mike Tomlin and company, and join Pittsburgh? This is where my brain goes. And the reason I bring this up, too, is if you look at what the salary cap is next offseason for the Steelers, I know that they're going to need to figure out what they're going to do with T.J. Watt, players like Joe Hayden. There's some veterans they'll need to lock up. But I think that possibility is out there of Aaron Rodgers to the Steelers in 2022. It's all starting to come together, Ike. Read between the tea leaves. Tell me, am I nuts? What do you think? Nah, you're not nuts at all. So if seven rides out to the sunset, you get Aaron Rodgers, you tag T.J. Watt, you ask Joe Hayden for a pay cut. If Joe Hayden doesn't want a pay cut, you release him. You get another corner. Uh, you got to – so that, that – you'll still have some room or stuff on to it. So either you're you're going to pay stuff on to it or you'll let him go. Also get you another interior guy. So, yeah, that's a possibility. But that's what would have to happen if you get an Aaron Rodgers, you know. Joe and Hayden will have to take a pay cut or leave. Tua is going to have to sign or leave. TJ gonna have to get this franchise tag, which he'll be pissed off, uh, and we'll discuss with Aaron Rodgers. Pittsburgh would discuss with Aaron Rodgers if you come. These are the things we're gonna have to do to get you. Are you cool with that? Boom, there you go. So you're not talking out of sight, out of mind. There's definitely a possibility. And you said it first. I love it. I love it. Yes, we're, we're marking this down. We're marking this down. So again, Rodgers reporting to training camp as well. I immediately think to the other teams in the NFC North too, Ike. The Detroit Lions, the Chicago Bears, and Minnesota Vikings. So what am I talking about here? The Bears are going to go with Andy Dalton, who served as the backup in Dallas last season. The Lions have a new head coach in Dan Campbell and Jared Goff coming over from the Rams. New new system, new everything. we got to get used to everything. And then the Vikings have Kirk Cousins. So it's like, I'm like what we're talking about here at the Packers, they've won seven of the last 10 division titles in the NFC North, Ike. So like the rest of, like, I hate to be this guy and to write everyone off, but like stick a fork in those teams before the season starts. Because if you look at, by and large, what Aaron Rodgers has done in a Packers uniform, he has dominated that division. Yeah, I don't, I don't think Andy Dalton will be the starter for long. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think I think Chicago will move on to their young stud quarterback. And the reason why is their defense isn't bad at all. You know? And they they had traditional sit in the pocket kind of quarterback and had a leash on Mitchell Trubisky. That's that was only so many things he could do on the field. But with their young quarterback, who the young quarterback is? Justin Fields. Um, with Justin Fields, yes. With Justin Fields sitting in the back, they're going to rely on his legs first couple of years, like how Baltimore did with Lamar Jackson. And then we can get into the the sitting in the pocket kind of deal. But I feel like I feel like Chicago feels they have a better better chance winning with Justin Fields. It's probably after the third four man, depending on the Dalton um, and just moving forward. You know what I'm saying? So I'm looking at Green Bay's defense. Uh, any particular defense always have problems with, with quarterbacks who can scramble. And we all know Allen Robinson is a hell of a, a receiver sitting over there with Chicago. So mm-hmm. Chicago and Chicago have some pieces to the puzzle. Um, I think Justin Fields is the jingle piece, so say especially with the defense they have. So I'm not going I'm not going quite throw it out there. I think Justin Fields gives Chicago a hell of a chance when it comes down to matchups when we're talking about the Green Bay Packers because now it puts the Green Bay Packers defense into a bind. So now it's really 11 on 11, not 10 on 11 because we got a quarterback not only who had a leash last year, but really it's not as mobile as Justin Fields. A lot of my friends from back home, Ike, you're going to get a lot of followers just based on that that comment alone <laughs> with 
high school friends of mine, college buddies of mine that now call Chicago home. Ike, we're going to move on to the final segment of the show. And before we talk about your weekend with Troy Palomalu and Ryan Clark, on Instagram, you met Dr. J. How did this go down? What was it? Had you met him before? I have so many questions, but the floor is yours. No, I haven't. So I honestly, um, that was my first time meeting Dr. J in Vegas. He's a huge cigar fan. He loved the cigars. So I, I happened to to be out. Um, I'm getting a table to eat, and the host said, uh, "You know, you sitting beside Dr. J." I was like, "Ooh, ooh, ooh stop playing with me!" She was like, "Yeah, you you sitting beside Dr. J. You gonna have a table right next to him." And in my head, I'm like. I don't want to be a groupie, but um definitely asking him for a picture. Yeah. So I saw he's he's with his two homeboys, his OGs. I saw him, I see his shoes. He got the Air Force Ones on, but they still is Air Force Ones. I say, Dr. J is still a fan? Like one walking home. J is still a fan? Hold on. Doc, I'm Mike Taylor. He said, I know. I right, Taylor, I said, well, shoot, I'm good. I can go to the Hall of Fame, too. That's what I'm saying. Right here. <laughs> shit. Since, Doc, since, Doc, since Doc know a little, I, I can go to the Hall of Fame, too. Um, I said, Doc, you got Stiller. She was on, he was like, I'm a huge Stiller fan. I'm like, little did I know. You know what I'm saying? So we chop it up. We take a picture. I give him my cigar. I get his phone number so, you know, me and Doc be texting now. I get his, I get his, I get his phone number. I get his phone number. I say, Doc, you hit that cigar? He said, I'm at the pool right now. I'm hitting it right now. What a great smoke. I say, oh, hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I'm walking around like a little kid showing people like, me and Doc text each other. Me and Doc texting, me and Doc texting each other. So on um, my, to this day, you know, if you know, if you don't know Dr. Julius Irvin, for y'all young generation, uh, going on YouTube, um, his resume when it comes down to the NBA and ABA is unbelievable. So I really can't get into it. Go check it out. But, yeah, that's that's what happened with me and Doc, man. I didn't know Doc used to live in Orlando. He lives he lives in the, uh, in the A right now, but he's a huge cigar fan, so – I always keep in touch with him. I shoot him once a week just to see what the heck he's doing. But um, yeah, I was very, and I don't get excited. I don't, and I, I've been around everybody to be honest with you. You can name, I've been around. But when they say I was gonna be sitting next to Doc, I said, "Oh hell yeah!" <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Ike, you got to give yourself some credit too, though, because. Yeah, you want to get a picture. I know celebrities are used to it, but you have tens of thousands of followers on your page as well. So it's like you can help each other. I mean, if you're both cigar fans, you know what I mean? So it's not like I feel like a lot of times, oh, let's grab a picture and then you tag someone else in it. And then all your friends are like, whoa, how did that happen? And I saw the picture. I'm like, I can't wait to ask Ike about this in terms of how he even started a conversation because I know I know you're not like that. I know you're not out there just like, you know, fishing for likes or right. retweets. No, nah, not at all. You know me. Um, I try to give everybody space because that's that's just the respect level. When you see people out and about, man, they they they, they want to live and be human. Um, and sometimes it's just hard to do when you get a guy of that caliber like the Dr. Julius Irvin. But it was good meeting meeting with him and talking to him. Matter of fact, as we get off the show, man, I'm going to shoot him a text. Here we go, too. See, I want to see those Steelers Air Force One shoes. That, to me, you got my attention immediately with that because that was the big question I had. It was like, what was your end to even begin a conversation without totally fanboying? But that's that's good reason. Oh, 100%. Once I saw them, oh, my conversation, once I saw the Air Force Ones, the Steelers Force Ones, I just took off on the conversation. It was it, um, the main coat on the sideline with the scene just running the whole down to me. I'm like, I didn't even notice. 
Ike, you were also in San Diego this past weekend, hanging out with your former teammates, Troy Palomalu and Ryan Clark. What's the best story that you can share with us about your weekend with them? Oh, oh man. We probably went through, and you know, Troy has a compound in San Diego. He doesn't have a house. He has a compound. <laughs> He damn near, he, he damn near has a winery as well. And people love Troy, so they they give giving Troy stuff. They just be giving him stuff. We probably went through 15, 16 bottles of wine. <laughs> probably smoke. I know for sure I smoke eight cigars and Three hours. <laughs> um, I know, I know for two days, for two for for two days, I don't have to do an ab workout because I was crying and laughing. We were crying and laughing <laughs> the whole time we was there. Um, <laughs> My last, my last night, it was uh, uh, me, Troy, and his father-in-law. And I don't know if you ever seen that movie, uh, in Miami. You say that, that again, I can. Can you can you say that again? I could cut out what movie. You, One night in Miami. What? I have not. You seen I have that not. movie yet? With Cook, um, Malcolm X, uh, Muhammad Ali, um, those guys. It's called One Night in Miami. You should check it out. Mm -hmm. That's what happened yesterday with us. Uh, one night in San Diego. And we didn't leave his patio table. The conversations, the laughs, the atmosphere, the moment were so deep like and and all three of us have seen that movie and i said this is a one night in miami i say people would i say troy people would would break a arm and a leg just to see you in this form like you're all the way human form i say bro i'm sitting back looking at you in this form and I'm enjoying you really being you. You know what I'm saying? So it was it was that part. Um man, I wish man, I wish man, I wish we had an audience. I wish we had an audience because Troy's real life one of us. And what I mean by one of us is uh if you was to ever have a kid and you just want to draw a person up, be like, I want this person to have this quality, this quality, this quality, this quality, this quality. That's Troy. But people don't really get to see Troy. And I and I and I tell TP, I say, TP, bro, you gotta start coming out some more. Like people want to see you. I, I say, bro, you're a unicorn because you never come out. And then when you do come out, it's like, holy moly, that's that's TP. But um, between me, him, and Ryan Clark, man, that that first night I wound up staying an extra night. That first night, bro, we was we was crying, laughing, like so hard. You know, we just had it. We just had a a good time. So I gotta wrap it up. Uh, people who's who's helping us out right now, they're definitely. Uh, they got things to do. So I want to give a shout out to Mark Bergen. I got to give a shout out to Bet Online from being with us from day one. I got to give a shout out to Break TV, Miss Courtney and her crew. I got to give a shout out to Believe and Stillers Podcast uh, for giving Mark and I this opportunity from day one. Uh, in 10 more days, in 10 more days, the season is approaching, the preseason season is approaching. Yep. Make sure y'all check out the Hall of Fame speeches. Uh, we have a lot of Pittsburgh Steelers that are going into the Hall of Fame. So check that out as well. 
Dallas Cowboys, Pittsburgh Steelers, less than 10 days. The 2021 season is under the way. Thanks. Make sure y'all give us a five-star review because this is what Mark and I do. All we talk is five star things we like to go to five star restaurants we like to stay in five star hotels and we giving y'all five star analysts and commentary so check us out give us give us a good five star lineup man and i think i pretty much hit it all mark you got anything to say yeah, yeah. if i want to do abs i'm just going to give you a call we can get rc and troy on the horn and i can just laugh and skip <laughs> abs at the gym this week so <laughs> there's that we are in the process of That's rescheduling sure. our guest as well so that'll either happen next week or the week after. Still working to bring a guest on here on the Believe It Steelers podcast, who I think our listeners and viewers are going to love. Ike, you're the best. I'll go ahead and sign off for both of us here. For Ike Taylor, I'm Mark Bergen. Thank you for listening to the Believe It Steelers podcast. Rate, review, and subscribe. Hit that subscribe button, five stars on Apple Podcasts, and follow on Spotify. Take care. So long, everyone. We'll see you next week. Peace.